Hello, believers, non-believers, and everyone in between. You're listening to Stories with Sapphire. I am Sapphire Sandalo. Now get cozy and open your mind because it's story time. Hello, everybody. I don't know why I, I sing my intros now. Welcome to Stories of Sapphire Live. I am Sapphire. Oh no, and I have a burp. It's not coming out. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a live stream I do every Wednesday. Yes, it is always this chaotic. Um, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. I read your emails that may not make it into the podcast or the YouTube channel. And then at the end, I take one of my many Oracle decks and pull a card and we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna pull from the Magic Morsels Oracle deck. This was given to me from uh, Lady Moon Co. Highly recommend checking out their store. It's ladymoonco.com, I think. Um, but they've got these really cool um, decks. This is the food, <laughs> the food themed one. And she also gave me a vegan food themed one as well as a song lyric themed one. That one's really cool. So we can cycle through those. I know I have to just like, I collect Oracle decks and tarot decks and I have so many that I've literally just never opened. So I was like, why am I letting it just like sit on my shelf? Um, let's see here. All right, uh, boo, 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 boo. how is everyone doing? Oh, a new video went up today, um, as well as a new podcast episode, season nine started. Um, the podcast is available on any platform that you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, I think. I don't think I, I have loaded this one yet, so maybe not. Um, Sam, when are you gonna do an animated video? It's been a while. I know everyone keeps asking me, here's the thing y'all need to understand about the animated videos. They take so much out of me. I don't think people understand. And it's because drawing like doesn't come easily to me anymore. And I don't know how to <laughs> explain that. So like I overthink it. I like over and it's like there's there's the version that like I want it to be, but then the version I have the time and energy for and I've explained this before but um right now my podcast is the only thing that has sponsorships and is bringing in any revenue so this is my job so unfortunately I have to focus on the podcast right now um and growing that and then the goal is once I'm able to hire someone else to do the drawings for the YouTube channel then I'm gonna do the animated videos again. But until then, they're gonna be on hold. I might do like maybe one a month. I don't know if that's frequent enough for you guys. <laughs> I know you guys like, I, here's the thing, I love the animated ones too. Those, like, as exhausting as they can be, they like, are truly the favorite thing that my favorite thing to do it's it's a weird it's a love-hate relationship it is but i i guess that's um anyways I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do all of it without losing my mind because i don't know how many of you are from uh my previous show something scary i was doing a half hour podcast and a 10 minute animated video every week um I do not recommend. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you think about the amount of time that goes into like when I write things, I, I like I, uh, -uh I don't poop stuff out. Like I spend time <laughs> writing things, thinking it out because I truly believe in quality over quantity, and I feel like with something scary, it was getting to the point of quantity over quality, and it it was driving me mad. So that's why. But I'm going to figure it out. 
Anyways, oh, I love uh, Lulu Love. I love the podcast with images, like the Russian piano video was good. Okay, yeah, and I mean, here's the thing. Like, when I post the podcast versions of stories on the channel, I still put, like, a couple images. Um, But, yeah, I just won't, like, draw out the whole thing. <sighs> Anyways, sorry, y'all. I know, it's so dumb. It's, it's like, I know it's the one thing you guys want to see, and it's the thing that I love the most, and yet I'm not doing it. Like, what? Anyways, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> All right, you want to hear your first story? Um, it just looks like a block of text, so hopefully I can get through this. This is called The Podcast from Malay. Malay? I hope I said your name right. All right, here we go. Anna was driving in her car. It was late at night and she was coming home from work. She turned on her radio and tuned into her favorite podcast. She wasn't really into the subject of podcasts. She just liked hearing another voice in the room or car, I guess. She liked this podcast because this woman's voice was so soothing and nice. It sounded like an angel's. The woman would always talk about scary stories. Is this about me? <laughs> The woman would always talk about, not that my voice is an angel's, the woman would always talk about scary stories. She felt that didn't fit with her voice, but everyone has their hobbies. When she turned it on, she heard the woman talking about this new death mystery. She was curious because she always loved a good mystery. The woman's exact words were, Today, a new mystery has been sent to us. This email states that today, 32-year-old Illyrian Smith, was mysteriously found dead at his job in Microsoft in Arizona, Phoenix. Nobody knows how he died. Most people think it was sickness, but showed no symptoms whatsoever. What do you think happened? Anna gasped in shock as she recognized that name. It was her friend in high school that she was still friends with. She was confused as to why she wasn't given any news about his death. After that, she immediately got a text from her phone. It was from her... It was from his friend's mom and it talked about the tragic death of Mike sorry there's a couple of grammar errors here she started crying a bit and tried to pull herself together she couldn't believe he actually died she was now about 20 minutes away from her house she decided to turn the podcast back on and listen to calm her down it was another mystery she listened carefully to what she had to say next the woman then said Another death today happened in Phoenix, Arizona. Today, 29-year-old Fiona Miley was found dead in her house. Nobody knows how she died. People say it was a heart attack since she had some health problems, but she showed no signs of heart failure. What do you listeners think? Anna froze again. That was her stepsister. She started sobbing and saw she had gotten another text from her father this time, talking about her death. She was confused and sad. She had loved her stepsister with all her heart, and now she was gone. She had just lost two people she loved. She decided to switch the radio station and change it to another podcast. She was still sobbing. She was now one minute away from her house, and she got another notification. It was about the death of Anna Miley. She froze and was confused. She wasn't dead. She was alive. And then all she heard after that was a loud crash, and it all went black. The woman laughed as she finished the podcast. Another day of death, she said as she fell asleep. The end. Ah, oh, okay. That's cute. Let me mark that as that. Move that to fictional. Um... A couple of things I would have done. Um, I don't know if you want notes on this or not, but um, I think like as she's driving back home, I think she too quickly easily accepts the fact that these people are dead. I think maybe she like pulls over and she calls them and they're still alive. And so it's like, then she doesn't believe the podcast. She's like, why are they saying like your name, right? And then like later, maybe she realizes that the podcast is actually like predicting people's deaths and then everyone starts dying. You know what I mean? Something like that. I don't know. That could be cool. 
That's just my thought. If I was writing the story, that's what I would do. But thank you for sending that. Um, Adam Lombardo, thank you for the super chat. You are a superhuman. Um, people always love to say, you know what they should do to creators when they themselves have no experience to back their opinions. So do what's best for you. Random opinions don't pay the bills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, um, especially with being a creator on the internet. I rely heavily on you guys. There is no show without viewers and listeners. So it's like trying to balance that. You know what I mean? It's different from like traditional media where you get paid to make a thing whether or not people like it. Because that is, that's a totally different business model. Here it's like there's no one giving me the, giving me money to make a thing. Anyway, it works a little differently. But yeah. So I, yeah. <laughs> Your concerns are heard. But my concerns should be uh, too. All right, you're ready for another story. Here we go, here we go. This one is, no, that one looks too. Oh, here's a, here's a hot tip. So for everyone who wants to submit a story, if you send your email and everything is just one block of text, you don't have any breaks in that text, the likelihood of me reading it is very low. <laughs> like, I have so many emails to sift through, so like, the easier your email is to read, that goes straight to the top. That's just a little little hot tip for all of you watching. So just, I mean, just break it up into just don't do one solid block because that last email was one solid block and it's hard. It's hard to read. It's hard to skim. Anyways, that's just my, because right now I'm like looking through emails and if it's all one big block, then I am like, nope, I'm going to find a different one. All right, this one's broken up. <laughs> this one's called Hat Man. Ooh, we love the Hat Man here. Here we go. My name is Kaylin or Cat. I love your spooky stories and just had to share mine. Okay, so first things first, I have many animals, two cats and a dog. And to preface, before this, wait a minute, did I already read this? Yeah, I read this. This is marked as red. Ay, 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 why? Why? Did that show up? Strange. Okay, we're gonna not do that one then. Sorry about that. Why are these showing up? Oh my gosh, excuse me. Oh my gosh, excuse me. Did I already read that one? Oh my god. Do you guys hear my stomach right now? All right, this one looks interesting. Okay, there's no title, so we're just gonna go for it. I don't feel comfortable saying my name, so I'll just call myself Sarah. I also won't say my friend's name, so I'll just say Charlotte. At this time, me and my BFF, Charlotte, were 15 years of age and wanted to get our brows done as normal teenagers do. One day, me and Charlotte made plans to meet at the mall at the shopping center. Our parents allowed it and also allowed us to go without them. Once we met up, we looked around and bought what we liked. With our hands full of bags from different shops, we kept seeing places we could get our brows done, but they wouldn't allow us to since we were below the age of 16 and had just turned 15 around two months ago. We decided to go upstairs since we hadn't checked that out yet. Next to the escalator was an old man with loads of wrinkles, no offense, and gray hair, also no offense. He had a wide smile showing his teeth that didn't match with his eyes, but it was like he did want to smile. He had some leaflets in his hand that, as we walked there, we saw nobody would take it without a glance at it. When we came over, we saw the leaflets had a red cardboard frame around pink paper holding, even darker than before, red handwritten writing. The writing almost looked like it was written with blood. We took a look at it and gasped. It was a place we could get our brows done. Convenient, the paper said. Brows, a place to get your brows done. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> Address. 
It did say the address, but I'm not going to say it for obvious reasons. We took the leaflets off him eagerly and asked together, should we come at nighttime or daytime? He replied with, night. We were so desperate that we didn't realize the sketchiness of this. We agreed to visit next time we met up together shopping. Just the two of us, alone, together. Next time we went shopping, we almost forgot about the man and the leaflet since it had been so long, but I needed to get my phone that I stuffed at the bottom of my purse, but instead of grabbing my phone, I grabbed the leaflet, which was now crumpled. I realized my purse was blood red like the writing on the leaflet. Then I realized that the redness came from the handmade leaflet. I told Charlotte and we decided we'd go that night. That evening, we went to the address together and came to an empty car park. We thought we accidentally came to the wrong address and decided to head back to the shopping center. As we took our first step to leave, we heard an ice cream truck after a couple seconds. And then we saw it. We both decided that we came here. So we came here to nothing. So we might as well have some ice cream to make the most of it. Oh, no. Me and Charlotte approached the truck and saw inside the same man we saw in the shopping center, still with that smile showing his crooked teeth. Charlotte asked him, this is where the Google, this is where Google Maps took us, but here we are in an empty car park. She added a realistic fake laugh. Oh, he said, this is the wrong address. Do you want to go there in my truck? Don't do it. Me and Charlotte peeked inside and it didn't really look like an ice cream truck. We both shared a look and politely declined. Fine, but do you at least want some ice cream? He asked. Now with that, of course, we said yes. He made it and gave it to us. There you go, he said. The ice cream looked like the leaflet. The pink base, red cone, blood red syrup, and... Wait, what did the black sprinkles represent? It kind of looked like tiny bits of hair. No, it couldn't be. Could it be the hairs that come from your brows when you get them done? No, no, it's not. But no, it's just a joke he made, right? I take a glance at Charlotte and I know she's thinking the same as me if it could be. We both ignored our thoughts and ate it reluctantly. Does it taste nice? The man questioned, eager to know what we thought about it. Me and Charlotte nodded our heads even though it kind of had no taste to it. I felt dizzy. I looked at Charlotte, and although my eyes were blurry, I knew she felt dizzy too. Next thing we knew, we fainted, and we woke up in a dark place. I heard the man say, Still want your brows done? Only this time it'll cost extra. It will cost your life. He laughs at his words. I'll give you time to think about it. I hear his footsteps descending until there's no sound anymore. Are you there, Sarah? Charlotte asked nervously. At first, I didn't say anything. I was way too shocked of what just happened. After a while, I spoke and mumbled. Yeah. It was silent after that. Not long after, we both moved and shuffled. We'd been tied up together. It was no use, I say to myself in my head. We both moved and shuffled again and tried to get our purse to call the police. But he took our purses. I stopped after that and I still feel and hear Charlotte shuffling. What's the point, Charlotte? I asked her. We're going to die anyway. There's no use in moving about trying to see if your phone's with you. Remember the time we bought those friendship necklaces that were fake and you could call emergency services on it? She reminded me. Yeah, why? Are you stupid? Oh, yeah. After that, we stopped talking and tried to reach the necklaces. Charlotte said, I did it. I stopped trying and high five her. Oh, no, I said in my head. The footsteps came again. We fell silent. Made up your mind? He asked. What's your answer? We both said no, but he exclaimed, You came here for it, so keep your answer yes. He flickered on a candle, and we saw him clearly now. He was holding an axe. Tears formed in our eyes. The police were too late. He swung the axe, and it hit Charlotte. Her head rolled to the ground. He called someone in, and it looked like his wife. She did her brows. And I watched her do it. Unable to do anything else, I screamed. I screamed as loud and screechy as possible for help, thinking it would make him afraid and run away. But instead, they just waited until I stopped. Once I stopped, I didn't care about how sore my throat was. I just, I didn't want to die. 
Charlotte dying was bad enough and me being killed. When I stopped, he explained to me that I can scream all I liked since there's nobody for miles and miles away. Luckily, we heard the police and they both had a mad expression on their faces. How, he said. The police came and arrested them. Not until I left the place I was held hostage. I realized I'd been crying like crazy. When he passed me with the police holding him, he shouted, You're next, Sarah. It's been over five years since then. Nothing has happened. I've never done bra my brows in my entire life because of what happened. I miss Charlotte and I'd do anything to see her again in a happy state. If it weren't for her, I don't think I would have lived to this day to tell the story. I wonder how he even knew my name. I always wondered what happened to him. Until last month, he did the same thing in the same shopping center and some girls fell for it. When I saw them again in the shopping center, I told them this story. Some believed me, some didn't. But the ones who didn't are the ones who always shop there and are never seen again. I'm telling this to you because I don't want you to fall for it like me and Charlotte did. I hope you would never experience this. This story is all fiction. Or is it? <laughs> that was fun. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> That's a fun one. Thank you, Sarah. I have so many questions. I am hoping none of that, none of that was real. Um, if any parts of it were, that's creepy. Um, Adam, thank you for the super chat. It would have been neater if the necklace was mentioned earlier on. Imagine crime shows when evidence off screen is mentioned to solve a case. Law and order, special bullshit edition. <laughs> yes, I would agree. Um, like maybe the necklaces, maybe that's one of the things that they bought at the mall like beforehand. And then, then it's like a nice little callback instead of feeling like just a convenient thing that happens at the end right um yeah that was fun i <laughs> is that like i don't know i'm trying to think about like, the brow thing i'm like it, would people be that desperate to like get their brows done i don't know <laughs> um what was the other thing i wanted to mention this is like not really that related but just like a funny mall story that came to my mind when i was reading this so I forget how old I was, maybe in high school, maybe eighth grade. But I don't know if you guys remember that store Claire's. I think Claire's still exists. I was at a Claire's and I was looking for a new wallet and I was wearing a hoodie, my school hoodie. And I had like my, my wallet in my hoodie pocket, right? And so I'm looking at the wallets and I'm, I'm a very intense shopper like I'm not gonna buy something until I'm positive I want it and it's the thing that I want I don't just like you know just willy-nilly grab things and so I oops I um I'm looking at the wallets for like a long time and then when I leave I remember that my hand I put my hands in my hoodie pocket and I've got stuff in there right and I walk out and I just say bye to the cashier and I remember the cashier kind of like looking at me for a while and then I remember I look at the time and this is before cell phones so my mom had told me to meet me at a certain spot at the very very other end of the mall so I look at the time and I was like oh crap I'm gonna be late so I start running I'm running down this mall trying not to be late to meet my mom I get there my mom's not there I turn around and then the freaking worker from Claire's is right there and she looks at me and she goes can you show me what's in your pockets? And I was like so flustered. I like I didn't steal a wallet, but I knew what was going on. And I was just like, I pulled out my wallet and my lip gloss. And I was just like, just this. And then she looked at me and she was like, oh, okay. And then ran back. So she thought that like I stole a wallet. And I was just like, and I was just like so obvious. Like if that happened to me now, I probably would have handled it a little bit differently. But I remember my mom came and I told her what happened and she was just like, what? Why did she think you stole a wallet? And I was like, I don't know. Like I maybe because I was looking at them for a long time and then I had like my hands in my pocket. But then I remember uh, my uncle, my uncle's so funny. He's very like he does not like um, he, he's he's the type of person, I guess, like 
not really to pick a fight, but like if there's a reason to get like fucking riled up, like he'll do it. So I remember we told him that story and he was like, you should not have pulled the stuff out of your pocket. She had no right to ask you to empty out your pocket. You should have just stood there and been like, why don't you call? Like, I'm not going to do that. Why don't you just call security and then have them look at it and then she's going to look like an idiot. I'm <laughs> just like, that's a lot. That's a lot. But I also like get it because like that's kind of rude, right? Anyways, I hadn't thought about that in so long. And I don't know what it was about this story that made me think about it. Oh my gosh, it's already six. Okay. Yeah, that one was like a little bit of a long story. So, all right, y'all. You ready for your magic morsels reading? Uh-oh, what happened here? There. Again, it's from ladymoonco.com. Great website. They got real cute stuff. Oh, yay, yay. Okay. Okay, let's see what we get. And look how cute these cards are. It's very pink and shiny. Hey! Yeah, let's do this one. Oh, cute! We got number 32. The salad. Health. What does that say? Let's see. Was it 32? The salad regards health. Whether that be mental or physical health, its presence asks us to reflect on our relationship with our bodies. Ingredients, mental health, boundaries, relationship with self. Okay, so everybody in the chat, this is what you're going to reflect on for today and the rest of the week. What are the ways that you are... Be like, w what is the status of your health today and this week? And what are the things that you can do to improve it? Um, but also be kind with yourself, kind and patient. Stephanie, I have a new deck for you to maybe try out. What's it called? Oh my god, I have so many freaking decks. Okay. <clears throat> All right, y'all. Thank you for joining me today. This has been Stories of Suffer Live. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Don't forget, you can send you can send stories to me right here. Uh, oh, my God. Email it to storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. And don't forget, break up the text. If it's all in one block, I may not read it. <laughs>